Are the people really angry about the land tax? The Tories must not be rode roughshod over, though. And more dead if we do it. It is painful to lose men, but we cannot be half-hearted in this, or they will see our weakness and take us, and we will lose thousands more. Uh, none for the Queen. What? Well, you cannot have hot chocolate. Your stomach, the sugar inflames it. Abigail, hand me that cup. Do not. I'm sorry, I do not know what to do. Oh, fine, give it to her. And then you can get a bucket and a mop for the aftermath. And that is a clip from The Favourite. Uh, it stars Olivia Coleman, and Olivia joins us in the studio. Hello, Olivia, how are you? Hi, good, thanks. stars more than just me. That's no, that's true, <laughs> but it's, but you are, you are Queen Anne in a movie about Queen Anne. Yeah, and her equal friends. And her equal friends. And I was thinking when I was watching the film, I don't think I've interviewed you since Tyrannosaur. Oh, that's right, yeah. Which for you actually then became... Such a big movie, such an... I think you and Paddy Considine came, came in. We came, yeah. Uh, it was and, you and Mark. That's yeah, right, yeah. that's right, that's right. So that's 2011. And that was kind of the start of a lot of good things Yeah, for you. that changed everything, yeah. So here we are, many years later. Tell yeah. it, give us some thoughts about uh, The Favourite and, and your Queen Anne. I loved doing it. And actually, bringing up Tyrannosaur, it was a similarly sort of joyous experience, doing Tyrannosaur and doing this film. And when the, when the favourite finished filming, the next day after we'd all said goodbye, I felt genuinely quite bereft that I wasn't going to work. I loved it so much. And Emma Stone, Rachel Weisz and all of us you know, became such good friends. What's interesting about making a film about Queen Anne mm. is that when it starts, you're thinking, oh, OK, here comes another period, period drama. Uh, another period <laughs> drama. We've yeah. seen these frocks. But then not only does it very quickly become obvious that this isn't just another period drama, yeah. but the fact that it's about Queen Anne, I sat there thinking... I can't remember anything what yeah. year is it and unhelpfully the film doesn't start with the year yeah uh, and i can't tell you either because i can't retain dates no well <laughs> queen anne so i looked it oh, up you've she, well she's done. on the throne 1702 to 1714 right and your husband prince george of denmark died in 1708 Yes. So are you a widow in this film yes i think he's died before the film starts so it doesn't mention it and the thing yorgos you can ask him questions he goes oh, i don't know uh, he He's sort of enjoys director. the fact... Yes, yeah, sorry, Yorgos yeah. Lanthimos, the director, who's incredible. But he loves just making you... You have to think about it. There's a lot of questions about the very end, the final scene of the film. And people go, what's that mean? And he goes, I don't know, what do you want it to mean? What do you think? Which I love him for that. And it's so so often spoon-fed, what they would like you to think. And he likes what people come up with. Yes. Just tell us about your Queen Anne and the research that you did in coming up with this hilarious, tragic, monstrous child of a queen? <laughs> well, I didn't do any research because I always think it's in the script. If the script's good enough, it's all there. And this really was all there. I knew when she was monstrous, when she was childish, when she was all of those things. The work had been done. You know, I sort of uh, looked at images of that period to see you know, the sumptuous stuff they wore and I could picture what they wore. And, and But then we were wearing those things anyway, so that was also done for us. Emma and Rachel had to wear corsets. I didn't really, which was great. I just wore big nighties. <laughs> and I knew nothing about Queen Anne from school. I don't remember that ever coming up in my history lessons. And anyone I've spoken to who went to the school in the UK can't remember. <laughs> no, that's true. So there's, there's lots of big history going on off screen. There's yeah. a war against Spain. Yeah. And England and Scotland have just Becoming been united, united and yeah. all that kind of stuff. But all of that sort of doesn't matter, yeah. does it? There's you yeah. and a nighty. Yeah. <laughs> and Rachel. Yeah. Uh, we, should, we should explain a bit more. OK, so this, this central kind of triangle, mm. the love triangle, I guess, with you and Emma Stone and Rachel Weisz, just explain mm. who they are and how they are vying for your favours. So Queen Anne, the most powerful person you can be in a nation at that time, is the monarch. Her childhood friend, Sarah Churchill, Lady Marlborough, is um, sort of running the country on the Queen's behalf because the Queen is often suffering from ill health. And so Sarah Churchill's sort of in charge, but also their lovers. And Abigail Hall, who becomes Lady Masham, is a distant cousin of Sarah Churchill's. She's fallen on hard times, comes to the palace to ask for a job and works her way up through the ranks and ends up also becoming a lover of the Queen. And so then there's this very uncomfortable sort of triangle where Sarah Churchill and Abigail Masham are vying for the attentions of the Queen because she's you can't have a job particularly then you can't have your own money it's all dependent on the man you marry or the rank you're in and so if you can be favoured by the Queen that's the only way to survive really. How unusual was it as far as you're concerned to, ha to be in a film where, the, where there's a triangle of three women at the heart of the story? This keeps coming up <laughs> it's amazing isn't it three women 
in charge of a film. <laughs> but I can think of many films where there have been, or well, Bridesmaids in recent years, Thelma and Louise, uh, Baby Jane. You know, it's it's always happened. And every time it happens, people go, wow, who'd have thought, you know, you can watch a film with three women in the lead. Why does it keep coming up? I don't know. Because it still, f- it still, <laughs> still feels different, Because it's different, not I think. common enough. If it was every other film, we'd stop asking. It does happen, and it does happen a few times each year, but that's not good enough. And that's why I think it keeps coming up. But this isn't the first. And each time it happens, it's great, mm. because 51% of the population in the UK is female. So we should be represented. <laughs> I want to ask you about this uh, one particular scene, and I don't think it's a spoiler because these events were many hundreds of years ago. So I don't, you know, it is out. Everything is out there, but it sort of gets to the heart of, it seems to me, of who your Queen Anne is and who Queen Anne genuinely was, and that's the heartbreaking fact that she lost seventeen children, mm. and that scene where you explain that is incredibly powerful because it's raucous and funny at at, at one moment. Mm then suddenly your Queen Anne is telling us this heartbreaking fact and it all kind of slots into place because, of course, that would make anyone mad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When I found out that when reading the script, then I didn't care how she behaved. (laughs) I thought after losing that much pain, losing that every single one of her children, 17 children, all died. The eldest got to 11. I think you can behave however you want after that. You can, you know, that informed everything for me, how she was. Which came first, Olivia, Queen Anne or Queen Elizabeth II in terms of the gig? Oh, uh, Queen Anne, yes. Yeah, not historically, obviously no, Queen no, Anne. No, but Queen Anne job-wise as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, so at what stage in that did you hear about the the gig coming up for for the crown? Well, maybe I was midway through doing The Favourite when I found out about the crown. Oh, I can't really remember. I'm not very good at placing when things happen. <laughs> A few years ago now, we interviewed Claire Foy, just as, and she'd done a movie with Andrew Garfield, and we did an interview with them together, and she knew that it was you, and she was oh. so desperate to tell us. Oh, but, but had, she didn't It hadn't been anything. announced. She was just, you know, oh, if, I'd given her, her. if I'd given her a tenor, she probably would, or a, <laughs> you know what I mean? She was so keen so to when say was that? it was Olivia Coleman two or three years ago. I can't okay. remember, but it was, she was so excited. Oh. And it does feel to a lot of people, and I know that other people have said this to you, that it's after many years, it feels as though there's a, a career explosion about to happen for you that, because not just the awards for The Favourite and for you, the Venice Festival, the Biffers, Golden Globe nominee, Oscar talk and so on for, for this. Why are you cringing? Silly. <laughs> Why are you cringing? I don't know. It's, just, it's silly, isn't it? Why is it silly? <laughs> you picture it when you're little, don't you? And then people talk about it. And then you try not to get excited because it's sort of silly. And then you don't want to you don't want to get your hopes up. So it just seems absurd. Now I'm from North Norfolk. That's and, a fantastically uh, British <laughs> <laughs> British reaction uh, to it. No, but but the combination of just the buzz for the favourite and the fact that you're stepping into the Queen's shoes after the extraordinary run with Claire for it just feels like it's this is gonna be your moment, that's all. Well, I know no, it's not that's a question, nice. but yeah. <laughs> I genuinely love working. I love getting up in the morning and going to work. It just so happens that more people are watching the jobs I do now. <laughs> I just want to try and think of that, you know, keep enjoying it and appreciating it. You must have had part of you comparing Queen Anne with Queen Elizabeth II only because they sit on the same throne, but such yeah. incredibly they haven't, different women. Yeah, no, they've both got Queen in their name and that's where the similarities end. Yeah, I can't compare the two at all. Is it true that you've... Um, taught your parents to use Netflix yeah bless them <laughs> I was excited I'd got the crown they went what's that I went oh no we've got to... did they not know no mum only watches Coronation Street <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so have they watched the old ones yeah so they started at the beginning and uh, I think mum pulled a very unmum sort of four hour stint you know. she binged watched she binged yeah. So now she's going so to... Did she like Claire now. Foy? Loved her. But everyone, everyone does. The, the world does. And my husband, I knew about the job when I was watching the second season and my husband kept going, because I was in love with Claire Foy as well, and he kept going, God, look at her, she's amazing. Every note, I mean, she's she's incredible. I was like, oh, all right, I'm going to have to do this. <laughs> now, that's how the world feels, so I really hope it's OK when I come in. And was there a moment in, in the filming of The Favourite 
where you thought, because I know you've you worked with Anthemos before, mm-hmm. where you thought actually we're onto something here. You know, this is funny. It's grotesque. It's riotous. It's a court drama. It's a period drama. Mm-hmm. You know, but that you that it felt as though some you know some something special would be happening. Yeah, I feel that quite often with some things, and I don't care if no one else sees it. We're doing something or watching someone in a scene going, "Yo, that's amazing what you just did," and that's enough for me. And it felt like that a lot on The Favourite and it is particularly nice when it comes out and other people really like it. You go, I'm not mad, that was really, I knew it was lovely. I feel that on in smaller moments quite often. It feels as though that at the end of the film you you would want to stay in touch with Rachel Weisz, who I know you've yeah. acted before, and with Emma Stone. Yeah, and that you we're friends for life stay now. Stay mates. Well, I think that. <laughs> so I'm going to be the annoying one who's going, hi, guys, <laughs> come for lunch. So given that you're going to have an amazing 2019, what are we going to see you in next? Or, or can you even think beyond The Crown? Les Miserables is, is oh, yes. on, isn't it? At, yes, that in, starts on the 30th Sunday, 9 o'clock. BBC oh, right, one. OK, yes, that then. That's next. Okay. <laughs> um, Olivia, it was 2011 when you came in for Tyrannosaur, which was clearly a big movie for you, so let's not leave it seven, eight years okay. until the next time. I suspect we probably won't. <laughs> Thanks for coming in and happy Christmas. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. And you. Thank you.